Hey folks, Dan for here, the rate update. Sorry, I'm a little bit late this morning. I had a meeting this morning, but now I'm at it. We have the Federal Reserve meeting this week. What's going to happen? I don't know. I hate to say that. I don't know. But uh, I just posted a newsletter to explain to you how the, how the Federal Reserve got behind the eight ball in this whole equation. And I think they did a very good job in some points, uh, but they what they didn't do is they didn't do a lot of homework or, or dig deep into uh, what the actually the federal government was doing on top of what the Federal Reserve was doing. And I think when you combine that, it's like adding fuel to the fire and it, it made things even worse than it was. So let's get on to basically the first thing I wanted to talk about is the Federal Reserve. They're meeting today, so our focal point right now is going to be the Federal Reserve. So here's, here's an article that I just posted, a newsletter that I just posted out there. And it basically gives you the backdrop of what they did and where they missed the ball a little bit on this. But uh, again, I was in their camp and the Russian-Ukraine war kind of threw a curveball. And I missed a lot of uh, things that I shouldn't have missed. So I'll learn with history. So I apologize about that. But the federal play, uh, Fed's playbook is already out for, for what they're going to come up with this week. Okay, but let's let's take this in the context. What actually happened uh, to to put us in this in this position? Well, in August 2020, the Federal Reserve announced that they're going to change their inflation fighting strategy. What they did is they came out and said, you know, we usually try to keep inflation at a two and a half uh, point mark, but we're going to let it run hot for a while because we think uh, it's going to run hot real fast and then cool off just as fast. Uh, so when they came out there, they said the newly announced uh, framework meant the Federal Reserve would be waiting a longer period of time to hike rates than it usually does. All right. Along with the uh, Fed cuts, uh, big Fed cuts, the Fed was also buying mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. OK, so what were they doing here? Well, basically, in, in a nutshell, they were doing this. They were making money as cheap as it's ever been basically for consumers when it comes to credit cards and everything else, and especially with mortgages. And that's what they referenced the mortgage-backed securities market. Okay, so they were they were fueling the economy or helping fuel the economy, but things get a little out of whack. So we go down through here and you're gonna see that by the second quarter of 2021, it was clear that the Fed miscalculated on a lot of these measures, okay? Let me, let me throw another piece of the pie in there. So the Federal Reserve was making things cheaper for everybody. They're making mortgages cheaper for everybody. But the Federal Reserve or federal government was in the background just pumping out money, stimulus money, and a lot of it. So you can see here, they spent $5 trillion to stimulate the economy. $1.8 trillion went to individuals and $1.7 trillion went to businesses. Okay, so that's that part of it. How much was it really in context? Well, it was triple what they did back during the Great Recession. Okay, so let's put this into context just so you know why inflation is running out of control and now the Federal Reserve is trying to combat that. So you have the Federal, Federal Reserve made money cheap and then the federal government just started pumping out money to businesses and individuals. So you had all these individuals and companies having a ton of money, well, they're going to spend it. And then you had the borrowing of money really, really cheap. So you could spend even more than you had. All right. Well, now we're starting to pay for it. Okay. So that's the whole context or the backdrop of what we're looking at. So now let's go into the economic calendar and start filling in uh, some holes here. But to, to be transparent here, let's discuss what the Federal Reserve does. They have two major mandates. One is full employment. So we, we watch, we monitor the jobs numbers and what's going on with that. And then the other mandate is inflation. So let's get through the economic calendar and see how much information is coming out this week that is going to play a role or at least on the minds of the Federal Reserve while they're meeting this week. So we go to the economic calendar and let's go over to that and see what's coming on our agenda for the week. So the first thing is out today is we have manufacturing manufacturing numbers. They were a little weaker than it was expected. The previous month we had 57, forecast was 57.6. So they, they expected the number to be up slightly. It was actually down, okay? That's not good, all right? We can see these numbers right here. So now we get to other parts of this. The JOLT index, what is that? That's the number of job 
openings. So remember, one of the mandates of the Fed is maximum employment. Well, there's 11.266 million job openings or available. That was the last reading. They're expecting it not to move. There's still that many people that are that many job openings or positions open. So we'll have that number on Tuesday. And again, remember, maximum employment is one trigger that the Federal Reserve has to monitor, right? So then we start seeing non-farm payrolls. You have ADP coming out on Wednesday. Their number is usually not very good, not very accurate, but it's something for us to monitor. They said the previous uh, week, we had non-farm payroll employment numbers was 455,000. Their expectations are for 395,000. So uh, more people coming back into the job force. Again, this is an inf a Federal Reserve thing that we're gonna monitor. Non-manufacturing PMI, um, they're expecting that to stay steady. Crude oil, okay, what the inventories are there. Why do we look at these things? Well, these two are going to gauge us on what the inflation figures are looking like. And then we have the Federal Reserve coming out and speaking. I can guarantee you Wednesday is going to be one volatile day. This whole week might be volatile moving up into the Wednesday when the Federal Reserve is going to meet. Thursday, we have initial jobless claims, another job number. And then Friday is all about jobs. So this entire week basically is going around what the Federal Reserve's mandates are, inflation and jobs. That's why we are so focused in on these two areas, all right? So tomorrow is gonna to start the onslaught of all this news. But now with all this data that we have so far today, which isn't much, what's going on with mortgage rates? So let's get over to what's going on with the MBS market. So the MBS market is right here. Why do we focus in on that? Well, this right here, it shows you what's going on with the price of an MBS bond, a mortgage-backed security bond. Why do we care about this? Well, great question. This is a bond that trades on Wall Street that is the biggest component. The, the, the yield on this thing is the biggest component of your mortgage rate. This number represents the price. What's going on with the price of the bond, okay? Just to show you what goes on with the, between the price of the bond and the yield or the mortgage rate, there's an inverse relationship, meaning when this number goes down, okay, the yield or mortgage rates go up. When this number goes up, the yield, aka mortgage rates, go down. So we like when this number is going up. Well, if you look at the chart below, we haven't seen that in quite some time. Okay. So that's what you're seeing here. You go down through here. What is the sentiment for the day? Well, it's kind of negative. It's not all the way to the right chart, but it might as well be um, because there's really not much news out today, but the rest of the week, we're going to see uh, the influences of from the federal government, as well as the Fed playing a big role in this. Where are mortgage rates right now? Where have they opened for today? And the MBS market has not flowed over to this. We don't have an update from Mortgage News Daily today, but this is a, a rate sheet published by Mortgage News Daily every day that I, I just use this as basically a benchmark. This Look at this number is zero. This is your first time watching this video. Well, to think of the rate at 5.41 today being zero. So where is it going up or down from there? That's the best analogy I can make. It's similar to the Dow Jones. You see this number right here. If this number is down or rates are up or down, doesn't mean your rate's going to be up or down. Think of the Dow Jones. If the Dow Jones is up 100 points, doesn't mean your stock is up 100 points. Doesn't even mean your stock is really up. But this is representative of just what the trend is for mortgage rates. How do you get your own customized rate that you qualify for? I'll give you that information at the end of the video. So let's go across here right now and explain to you where rates started this the week. And then we're going to compare on Friday. I'll compare where this is. I'm going to take a snapshot of this and compare it on Friday to see what effect the Federal Reserve meeting had on rates for this week. So we go across here and I'm going to tell you in my lingo how I read this. So today's rates are right here, published by Mortgage News Daily. The 30-year fixed rate is coming in right now at 5.41. It's up 0.01. So it's up one basis points. And it would cost you a fee of 0.4 points to get that rate. How do you figure out how much that cost would be? Well, basically you take your loan amount, 
you multiply it by whatever this number is down here. It says points. So in this case, you would multiply it by 0.4, and then you hit the percent sign, and then you hit the equal sign. That's how much it would cost you to get that rate. So if we go across here, you're seeing the 15 years up one basis points as well to 4.84 coming in with a cost. The government loans, FHA, VA, and USDA, I'm lumping those all into one because Mortgage News Daily doesn't post all three. So we'll just lump them into one right here. It is bucking the trend a little bit, down two basis points coming in at 4.88 with no fees. The 30-year jumbo is coming in up one basis point, so 4.56, no fees there. And the 5-1 arm is coming in at 4.38 with a half a point, but it, and it's up 10 basis points. And again, guys, these are just, to use these numbers, um, these are based on putting 20% down on a $350,000 purchase, okay, with a 780 credit score. So if you don't fit that individual, you know, those exact to a T, your rates are going to be different than this. So how do you find out what your rate would be? Well, easy. Go to therateupdate.com. Hit enter. This is going to give you all our information. Up at the top right, it'll give you the phone number to reach us. The middle button right here, how to apply online. This right here, book a meeting. What that'll do is you click it, it'll open up a calendar, and then you can set a time and day specifically to talk to one of us, me or one of my guys, and doing a one-on-one -on -one consultation. Or we have this new fancy dancy chat box down here that you can go to once you log in. This will pop up if you have any questions you want to ask us immediately. Uh, you can ask us on there. And many times I'm the person on there that you would be asking. So that's my report for today. If you want to find out what your rate would be, all you need to do is call. That's the best way I do this. I, I ask people to do this. Why? Our first call is basically fact finding. What are you looking to do? And then all the specifics. So think of it as a puzzle. Can't put the full puzzle together without all the pieces. So you call us or we call you, we get all the pieces. We put that piece, that puzzle together. And then me or one of my sales managers will call you to explain how we're going to do this, how we're piecing this together for you. And then the why, why are we putting you into that program versus another? And we want to explain that to you. Why maybe would we go with an FHA versus a conventional? Maybe we would do VA versus a conventional. Maybe we would go conventional versus an FHA. But we wanted to explain to you why we're doing it and all of your options. So that's what we like to, like to do. And we strive uh, to make sure that we educate you guys and inform you everything real estate, especially when it comes down to your finances. So thank you so much for watching today. I'll be back later this afternoon to give you a midday report. Let's see what rates are gonna do today. But my assumption is they're not gonna move that much today. But between tomorrow and Wednesday, they're going to start to move. What direction? I'll let you know tomorrow. So I thank you so much for watching the video. If you find value in the channel, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe down below, hit the bell every time I post a video, you get an alert. Take care, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.